Robin means business. Hashtag Race Home is presented by Audi, Vorsprung, Dirk Technik, Fanatec, Realistic Simulation Hardware, Sony PlayStation. This is for the players. Speedpool, premium content for premium customers. Uptrend, the lifestyle magazine from Abt Sports Live. Hello, welcome to round five of the RCCO Race Home Charity Racing Series. Incredibly, we are already halfway through the season, time is really flying. And tonight, we will see a race on another iconic racetrack. Tom Christensen, which one? Yeah, very, very nice. We're going down under, we're going to Australia, we are going to Bathurst. Uh, Mount Panorama Circuit, uh, 6.213 kilometers long, uh, particularly the the drivers down there love it. The GT drivers had been there, plenty of them. There's a lot of wins from Audi there with the R8. It is technically a street circuit. It's fast. It's got 23 corners, many of them blind. It's uh, elevated uh, between the highest point and the lowest point. It's 174 meters uh, for the, um, yeah, the Audi Vision GT, the race home. I. Um, couldn't wish for a better circuit. I like to see the drivers get their hands on this great and unique track. Yes, I think it will be a very special race tonight here at Mount Panorama, a really iconic race track. We have Nico Muller leading the championship after his victory last time around in Interlagos and also Audi Sport Team up Sportsline with Nico Muller and Robin Freins in P1 in the team's classification. Before we are heading into Q1, let's have a look at our race format and the latest news before the start of this race. Hashtag Race Home has a unique and compact race format delivering exciting racing. It all starts with three qualifying sprint races. Only the three winners are proceeding directly to the semi-final. Q4 offers a last chance to get the other three spots in the semi-final. The top six contest the semi-final. Another sprint race. And it all ends in the super final, a one lap shootout of the best two drivers. Things were going quite wild last time around at Interlagos, and as a consequence, various yellow cards were imposed by race director Frank Bieler. And at a third yellow, you'll see a red card. After Dries Van Tor's victory at Barcelona and Kelvin van der Linde's strong showing at Interlagos, WRT has another promising guest driver this week, Christopher Haas. Championship leader Nico Muller has created a special livery for the Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo auction car. Stefan Vasha will be missing today's round due to clashing commitments. His place is taken by Roland Zumsander. Nico Muller not only won last week's hashtag race home event, he dominated also round 7 and 8 of the RCCO eSports series at Fuji, which saw some frantic action, especially at the starts. The Prototype Museum has reopened last week and could soon be the place of the first RCCO Slot Car Series race. Hashtag Race Home, it's the Q1 race here at Mount Panorama, the Bathurst Circuit 6.2. Very demanding kilometers and you can see the focus on Nico Muller's face. He will be starting from the last place on the grid by dint of him being the points championship leader in terms of drivers. Pole position, welcome Stefan Volta, Andreas Search alongside him. Then it's Lloyd Duval, Jamie Green and Nico Muller. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, mine, <clears throat> mine doesn't work, I didn't get any lights. I was... Oh, fuck. Stuck on the grid. Apologies for the language. Disaster for Jamie Green, who's stuck on the grid with some technical issues. And Nico Muller, with a slingshot start, finds himself in P3 already. So 
so we all leave the track. And poor Jamie Green then. Just, just Jamie. Finds himself utterly frustrated. So, Andreas Zurch leads the way at the moment, but not for long, because here comes Loic Duval and Nico Muller. P1 and P2 now for the two DTM stars. Loic Duval leading Nico Muller, who, as I remind you, is a Drivers' Championship points leader in the RCCO Race Home Series at the moment. So Loic knows that he's got to have his wits about him to prevent Nico Muller from coming through to pick up the lead, but... If Nico Muller can get something of a wind shadow uh, slipstream here, which indeed he does, and Nico Muller goes through into the lead. B1 for Nico Muller, B2 for Loic Duval. So these two breaking away from the rest of the pack at the moment. One of the most scenic circuits anywhere in the world, and the drivers absolutely love it. And you will have noticed, I don't doubt, in this uh, first Q1 race, Come on. Come on, come on. Yeah, going, come going. On. Come on, Press Loic. that X. Come on, Loic. <laughs> My yes. figure is a... Yes, <laughs> come on, Loic. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Little uh, love tap on the back of Nico Muller from Loic Duval. I was saying you will have noticed that actually there's not been as much uh, team radio traffic as ordinarily there would be in Q1. That's primarily because the drivers, a gobby lot as you well know, are having to really focus and concentrate here on this Q1. You could see the pressure that Nico Muller was putting through the brake pedal then as he made his way through that left-hander. Loic Duval, though, he knows it's now or never in this uh, Q1 race. Up against the points championship leader, Nico Muller, here he comes. Oh, dive ball. The move of the day. Wow. A brilliant move there. He saw the opportunity and went for it. <laughs> Great driving. Side by side over the mountain. From both Nico Muller and Loic Duval. They are doing a fantastic job here. But it's Loic Duval who's got the whip hand at the moment. See just how he's... Oh! Hola. Hola. A mistake which Nico Muller... my star number, man. He couldn't take advantage of that. So, so close to being able to get past Loic Duval, but just wasn't able to get alongside and then go through. So good save, therefore, from Loic Duval when he ran out onto the uh, loose stuff. Down through this extraordinary track. Duval is under pressure. Muller is pushing as hard as he can. Stand by. It's the last lap, huh? Fucking hell. Already? Not three laps. No. Oh, fuck. I, I should have. <laughs> Once again, apologies for Lloyd's colourful language. They're side by side. Who's it going to be? Well, it's Nico Muller back in front now, but momentarily. Brilliant race that we're seeing in this uh, Q1 race. But it's going to be Nico Muller that takes the win, surely. Credit to both Loic Duval and Nico Muller for delivering spectacular entertainment. But it is Nico Muller that takes the win. But he and Loic Duval so far ahead of the rest of the group. Andreas Zerchluk, who is uh, going to finish in P3, is only now crossing the timing line. Absolutely remarkable racing. We'll take a look at some of the uh, replays here. Andreas Zurch then, who uh, initially held the uh, lead of the race, but was soon overcome by uh, both Loic Duval and Nico Muller, who really meant business. And their confirmation of the uh, result on screen for you. Now time for uh, Nico Muller to be interrogated about his win, and to do so, Mr. Lamont, Tom Christensen. Well done, Nico. What a great opening race. Very nice dice you had with Loic Duval. That was very, very close. And unfortunate, Jamie Green, he didn't even take part as he was stuck on the grid. How did you uh, enjoy going over, over the top of the hill? Yeah, it was a pity that Jamie wasn't part of it. Uh, he really got uh, the momentum since the last event. So I think he would have been a fierce competitor and it would have been nice to have him in the battle as well with Loic and myself. But um, that was cool. Loic is doing a very good job on this super tricky track with the controller. Um, 
uh, yeah, to keep it between the white lines is very, very difficult on such a flowing, narrow track that doesn't uh, allow any mistakes. And we had some nice battles, so uh, it was enjoyable. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the semi-final later. Even though it's virtual, you kicked up the, the dust and several exit of the corner. So uh, good luck in your progress. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Congratulations, Nico, also from my side. Another victory for the Swiss. And we have visited Nico Müller, who has become now a real star also in sim racing. Nico Müller, race winner and runner-up in last year's DTM season. The Swiss driver is now also competing in the sim racing world. Find him racing, not only in the hashtag Race Home Charity Racing Series, but also in the DTM Esports Classic Challenge the Formula E Race at Home Challenge and a guest star in the RCCO eSports Series. Even though Nico Muller is a rookie to sim racing, he got up to speed very quickly. He has not only won at the RCCO eSports Series and the DTM eSports Classic Challenge. After winning in the hashtag Race Home Charity Racing Series, he is now also leading that championship. And for the father to be, there really is no place like home. It really feels like, you know, coming home and it, it helps me settle down when I have days off and when, when I have time to spend with family and friends and uh, I really enjoy being here. I like to, you know, cycle around the lake, I like to spend time on the lake and uh, it's, it's a place that gives me lots of peace and, uh, you know, I, I can calm down, I can reflect on things and look forward to what the future brings. If our Q2 race is anything like the entertainment from Q1, hold on to your hats, because we're about to go. How's it, how's it? How's it on pole, man? Forget <laughs> it. Just like in real life. Yeah. Robin, what are you paying? <laughs> man, not enough. Uh, clearly, Robin, uh, deeper into your pockets is where you need to go. Robin Frein's going from uh, uh, P last on the uh, grid. Let's go racing then, here comes our Q2 race. Big, big welcome to Christopher Haas, who joins us here at Hashtag Race Home and uh, immediately is into lead. Uh, Sir Thomas Voigt really getting uh, pushed out there and uh, has gone from uh, front row start to the very back of the grid now. Robin Frings is already up to P2 and uh, got past uh, Bjorn Skotka and uh, Rennie Rast is also chasing Robin Frings as well. So. It's Christopher Haas that is leading the way at the moment from uh, Robin Freins and Rennie Rast. And uh, there is Robin Freins doing everything he possibly can. Of course, he has been so successful in our hashtag Race Home series, but it is Christopher Haas in the WRT car that is leading the way, being pushed every single centimeter. There is Christopher. Hugely successful racing driver and up against Robin Freins here. He wants to show who's boss. Look, Christopher Haas is one of the few drivers in our uh, Hashtag Race Home series who's actually wearing his racing gloves. He's taking this very, very seriously indeed. Haas uh, under pressure. Eh? Yeah, Robin Freins is putting the pressure on Christopher Haas, but he's soaking it up nicely. I don't know, it looks like there's less grip in comparison to the practice, no? Yeah, track is green. <laughs> uh, so how green is the track then, guys? Hey, <laughs> Dibby's face! Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Well, fair play to both Robin Freins and Christopher Haas for uh, keeping the cars on the tarmac there. But of course, Robin Freins, stealth like as always, has put himself into that P1 position, uh, relegating uh, Christopher Haas into uh, P2, and Jörn Scotcher is uh, P3. Now, these two stars are doing and uh, replicating what happened in our Q1 race in that they are breaking away from the rest of the pack, which is made up of uh, uh, Bjorn Skodka, uh, Rennie Rast and Thomas Voigt. So Robin Freins oh, nice is leading the race ahead of this man, Christopher Haas then, who is continuing to chase and is sticking right with him. Good on you, Christopher, come on. Oh, he's pressuring uh, Robin Freins now. However, Robin just absorbs it all and maintains his position in P1 despite the constant pressure from uh, Christopher Haas right behind him. Virtually uh, nothing between the two of them, something like three tenths. So the uh, WRT machine, this event being driven by Christopher Haas, Robin Freins in his uh, familiar uh, light blue livery, 
is leading the way. P1 and P2, which we're watching. And Christopher Haas, a little nudge on the back of the uh, Robin Frein's car, unsettles the back end just a little. But Robin's uh, experience means that he's able to hold on to that. So Christopher rubbing into the uh, wall as well and sparks flying off the uh, WRT car as they both give it absolutely everything they can in this Q2 race from our hashtag race home series. Frines leads the way. And is building a bigger gap than he's had, but it's now that Christopher Haas needs to use the wind shadow, the slipstream, it's his last opportunity before the uh, final sequence of turns, which lead the cars to the timing line and the critical checkered flag. Robin Frines making the car as wide as he possibly can. And we'll head towards the timing line, and it's a drag race to the checkers. Oh. Yes. Robin is delighted. May I remind you how grumpy he was right at the start of the race because he was starting from P last on the grid, but he still comes through and takes the victory. But P2 for Christopher Haas. Well done. Well done, Christopher Haas. What was the most difficult you found racing Robin Frines at the, this unique and fantastic circuit? Uh, yeah, definitely to pass him. Um, he defended very well, um, and that was actually my main issue. Uh, on top of the hill, he was a bit struggling, but on the rest of the part, he was quite wide. But you started from pole, and uh, you didn't meet any rabbits on the way. <laughs> Just kangaroos. Yeah, no, no rabbits, kangaroos, also nothing, all good. Well done, and uh, good luck on your progress. Thank you. Well done, Christopher Hase. He did not really need slipstreams in this race, but this might change in the next races. And slipstream in our championship has a different name. Let's see why. A new word was created when Rene Raz and Mikhail Nemas battled in the first hashtag race I home event. in the complete wind shadow. Now I have no wind shadow. <laughs> no wind shadow. shadow. Yeah. Kind of a toe, I would say. Kind of. Go inside. Go, uh, wind shadow. The wind shadow. <laughs> famous wind race shadow. home wind shadow. <laughs> watch out, mate! Watch out! Uh, I'm in your wind shadow! <laughs> I just had it in mind and I was very surprised how, how the slipstream uh, react for the cars, but my uh, English language memory was not coming to the word slipstream. So I, I said to the guys, wow, this is a big wind shadow. And I think this creates a little gag, a running gag out of this. So um, now if you see the races and you can just count how often somebody is saying wind shadow, it's, it's quite funny, yeah. <laughs> I'm in your wind shadow! This is a very important thing in our races, so the, the slipstream. Um, this is very essential and you have to place yourself correctly into the race that uh, when it comes to the end, you are the one in front. And that's where I have to, to do a little bit more tactics for the future and then I think it will be very good. Here comes Q3 then, pole position. It's Steve Gerber from Switzerland, a big Nico Muller fan. He won the auction, which was run by Nico Muller and his partners this time. In real life, he spends his time fixing electrical faults. He is an electrician. Very sparky is the wind shadow man that you can see there, Mikael Nemas. He's uh, on the last row of the grid alongside Mike Rockefeller. And the rest of the place is made up by Roland Zumsander, Bettina Schuller. Let's go racing then. This is our Q3 race here at uh, the Mount Panorama Circuit in Bathurst. If this is your first time watching uh, Hashtag Race Home, you are very welcome. We're delighted that you're here. This is Mikael Nemas, who's been such a star in Hashtag Race Home. And 
this. The uh, Q3 session is being led, uh, not by this man. This is Roland Zumsander, who's currently in P2, but he's under real pressure from Bettina Schoeller. In fact, Bettina Schoeller goes through. So now Steve Gerber, who started from P1 on the grid, is going to have to face the wrath of Bettina Schoeller as she tries hard to get on terms with the race-leading car. And whilst all of this is going on... Sorry, Mike. Mike Rockefeller has very quietly been uh, putting himself into a position where he can get past Bettina Schuller and maybe Miguel Nimas as well. So this will mean that this man, Mike Rockefeller, is up into P2. And the fight will be on here at Bathurst now for Mike Rockefeller in the remaining duration of this race. This Q race to try and get on terms with Steve Gerber from Switzerland, who is leading the way. Mikhail Nemus into a P3, which means Bettina Schuller is a P4 and Roland Zumsander is P5. So uh, Mikhail Nemas then, sparks coming off the uh, bottom of his car. There is Mike Rockefeller. He is closing the gap by some measure to Steve Gerber, but runs wide. He's through the grass. He's smiling about it. But clearly he carried just too much speed. And that has allowed Mikhail Nemas and Bettina Schuller uh, through. So Mike Rockefeller now finds himself in uh, P4. Mikhail Nemas and Bettina Schuller here arguing over that P2 position. And Mikhail Nemas has to um, be gentlemanly and uh, yield to Bettina Schuller, who's through into P2 now. All of it nicely playing into the hands of Steve Gerber, who is leading this Q race. So the car's screaming around this, um, as Tom Christensen said unique Mount Panorama Bathurst circuit, 6.2 kilometers, 3.8 miles, and by Jiminy, the demands of this circuit mean that we are seeing breathtaking entertainment as Mike Rockefeller fancies a podium place here. He was battling right at the start of this Q race with Mikhail Nemas, and he's back in that battle again, and he wins it. Mike Rockefeller up to P3, Mikhail Nemas relegated to P4. Bettina Schuller, P2, doing her level best to try and get on terms with Steve Gerber. Uh, but she's going to have Mike Rockefeller uh, come calling very, very shortly. But, of course, we are running out of metres of tarmac. And Mikhail Nima still fancies this P3 and will try and wrestle that away from Mike Rockefeller if he possibly can. So we follow the Mike Rockefeller car then as he tries to track Bettina Schuller, who is P2. Ordinarily, there would be lots of team radio conversation. But the sheer demands of this circuit means that all of our drivers are really having to concentrate more than ever before in this uh, race home event from uh, Bathurst. And it is going to be Steve Gerber, surely, that takes the win. Indeed so, from Bettina Schuller and Mike Rockenfeller. So many congratulations to Steve Gerber then on his debut in our hashtag race home series. He becomes a Q race winner ahead of Bettina Schuller who takes P2 and Mike Rockefeller who takes P3. So Steve Gerber makes his debut. Let's hear from him now. He's with Tom Christensen. Well done, Steve Gerber. You uh, guest driver. You joined. Very polite. Take it easy. And then you win your first race. How does that feel? Yes, that's great. I was very nervous. I had, uh, yes, uh, uh, a good line over the mountain. And uh, yes, it's great. But you are pretty handy behind the steering wheel. Well done. Thanks. Our guest driver really keep impressing us in the Race Home Charity Racing Series. Well done, Steve. And next time we will see a quite famous person, a YouTube star from Brazil. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my home. I'm ready to race home with you guys. My name is Cassio Cortez. I'm one of the hosts of Acelerados, which is the largest automotive YouTube channel here in Brazil. One of my co-hosts is Rubens Barrichello. I'm definitely not the fastest driver among our channel's hosts, but I been a racer for uh, my entire career, a journalist slash 
racer, uh, but I haven't been deep into the sim racing world up until uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, so I do have a bit of a setup here, more targeted towards fun, uh, which is what we're about to have, right? Uh, definitely honored to face the Audi Sport DTM guys, guys like Renan Ras, which I think is one of the best drivers, not in the DTM, but in the world. So I hope to honor the WRT team scholars and our Brazilian uh, racing fans. But above all, we want to help the cause and have some fun to help entertain everybody around the world, around the world watching this race. And here comes Q4. Good luck, everyone. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good race, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's a big grid. Go, Betty. <laughs> Long way, Jamie, huh? Yeah, I'm at the back. <laughs> I know you. Welcome. And Hope your car. car's working now. Yeah, me too. Everyone is so very polite at the start of the race. Let's release the cars now! Bettina Schuller from pole position is going to have Christopher Haas uh, diving up the inside straight away before they even get into turn one. Christopher Haas goes through. Like Duval squeezes Bettina Schuller and he goes through too. Oh, wind shadow. <laughs> wind shadow. <laughs> wind shadow central. Interesting. <laughs> it does not work for me. Why? I don't know why. But you invented it, Mikael. Wind shadow. Even in the other races. <laughs> Because you're wearing the T-shirt. I think so. <laughs> uh, so Thomas Voigt then pointing out that uh, Mikhail Nemesis' only wind shadow is on his shirt. It's slipstream to you and me and Bettina Schurler having to fight now with uh, Bjorn Skotka as uh, Mike Rockefeller has gone through and picked up that P3 place. In the meantime, as we see Loic Duval uh, working hard in that P2 position, Christopher Haas is up the road leading this race. Wow, Scotty. Oh, sorry. Oh, slightly inappropriate advance there from uh, Bjorn Skotka on Bettina Schuller. We could hear that on team radio. So Haas leads from Duval P2 and it's Mike Rockefeller in P3 chasing like Duval very hard here. Of course, it's all playing nicely into the hands of Christopher Haas, who's already been successful today. Mike Rockefeller now really pursuing Loic Duval. And is he going to be able to go through before the next turn? So Mike Rockefeller doing everything he can, but Loic Duval for the moment is uh, steadfast in that P2 position, but Mike Rockefeller is right on him now. They're side by side. Loic Duval and Mike Rockefeller, and Rocky goes through into the left-hander to pick up P2, and Loic Duval is relegated to P3, but Loic Duval is going to come back now. He's got the inside line for the next turn, but Mike has got just a little bit more momentum. However, Loic Duval runs across the curbs and the rumble strips and sure enough does put himself back ahead of Mike Rockefeller. This is a supreme fight for P2 between Loic Duval and Mike Rockefeller. Loic Duval there, look at the uh, concentration. Mike Rockefeller concentrating just as hard. They are side by side. For now, Mike Rockefeller is P2. Uh, P3 is uh, Loic Duval. But Loic is just looking for any other opportunity. And then quietly and unassumingly comes a Rene Rast who wants to join this uh, two-way fight, which will become a three-way fight for P2. So Loic Duval now is having to focus on defending from Rene Rast. A slight mistake there from Loic. Perhaps under the pressure from the uh, two-time DTM champion who's right on his bottom, almost. Uh, that is, of course, Rene Rast, who we can see to the right-hand side of your picture. And uh, an even bigger error from Loic Duval allows Rene Rast to go through to pick up that P3 place. And Duval now has got Bjorn Skotka and Bettina Schuller uh, behind. Then it's Mikael Nemas and uh, Thomas Voigt then. Christopher Haas is up the road leading this race. Mikael Nemas kicking up a bit of dust as well. And there is uh, Mikael Nemas, wind shadow man, who uh, has not been able to take advantage of Sanders. Like Duval drifts into that uh, turn and so too Rene Rast just trying to hold on to the back of the car. So it's gone from bad to worse for Loic Duval and 
Rene Rast is going to be under pressure here from Bjorn Skotka. That little mistake from Rene Rast, if it was a mistake, has indeed opened the door potentially for Bjorn. Oh, the rookie is coming. And indeed, Rocky is coming. So, Christopher Haas, keep your wits about you. In the lead of the race, Bjorn Skotka, P4 then. And uh, Rene Rast is currently P3. Very nice yucca plant behind uh, Bjorn Skotka there. There's a calming influence on his uh, driving. However, stealth-like he is uh, really reeling in Rene Rast here. And P3 could be up for a change uh, very quickly. Rene's very much aware of that, as you can see. No foliage in uh, Rene Rast's position where he's driving from. I wonder if that does give Bjorn Skotka something of an advantage. So, Rene Rast for the moment has been able to see off the challenge from Bjorn. Uh, Bjorn himself is going to have Bettina Schurler for company in a moment. This is our race leader, though, Christopher Haas, who is eight and a quarter seconds up the road. Well done, Christopher. It's all about the gloves, you know. And, uh, Christopher, you've almost got time to uh, pull into the pit lane, have a cup of tea and rejoin and still be in the lead. Such a good job this man is doing. And, all right, there's no need to react like that. <laughs> So, Christopher Haas then P1, and uh, Mike Rockefeller P2. You can just see Mike Rockefeller's car coming over the uh, crest there, and there is Rennie Rast, who's running in P3. What a great race this is. Bjorn Skotka, I said, was going to be under pressure from Bettina Schuller, and uh, sure enough, here comes Bettina now, uh, tracking this uh, Audi e-tron Vision Gran Turismo of uh, Bjorn Skotka, but for the moment, he's unable to get by. Tires squeal in protest as these drivers throw absolutely everything at this Bathurst tarmac. And Bettina Schuller tries to get the inside here. And that is a brilliant overtake. Well done, Bettina. Having gone through on Bjorn Skotka, picks up that P4 place. And now Rennie Rast will be within Bettina's target sights, I feel sure. Just hope we don't run out of laps. So uh, Bettina uh, potentially on for challenging for a podium position then as they scream down the uh, Bathurst circuit here. Mount Panorama, one of the most scenic circuits in the world. There is uh, Bettina then. She knows that uh, Rene Rast is just up the road and is going to do everything she can to get on terms with Rene. In the meantime, Christopher Haas extends his lead still further. In this WRT car, he is just nailing every apex. He's driving this circuit absolutely perfectly and doing a very good job in that P1 position, unthreatened by anyone, uh, because no one, frankly, can get close enough to him. So Christopher Haas, what a debut he's making in the uh, hashtag Race Home Series. There's uh, Mikael Nemas running in P6 ahead of Thomas Voigt and uh, Andreas Zurch, who's uh, P7 and P8, respectively. Uh, Mike Rockefeller is now some uh, 10 and a half seconds down running in that uh, P2. And uh, as you can see, we're on lap four of five. So it would require something Herculean from Mike Rockefeller, really, to get on terms with uh, Christopher Haas. Bjorn Skotka running in P5. Ahead of him is uh, Bettina Schurler. And uh, this is uh, Mikhail Nemas, who's in P6 at the moment. The hashtag Windshadow Man t-shirt, as you can see, from Mikhail Nemas. And uh, we go on board with his car then as he uh, really interesting line through that chicane but Mikhail it works well done to you so Mikhail Nemas then tracking that uh, Bjorn Skotka car which is uh, running in uh, P5 cross the timing line then to start the final lap here at uh, Bathurst 6.2 kilometers await for the final time in this race the race being led by Christopher Haas with Mike Rockefeller P2 Rene Rast P3 Bettina Schuller the car that we look at now running in at P4, some uh, 20 seconds down on the race leader, Christopher Haas. There is uh, Rennie Rast. Can Bettina Schuller uh, get on terms with the two-time DTM champion uh, before the kilometres run out on this uh, Bathurst circuit? Well, Bettina Schuller certainly looking extremely determined. And uh, Rennie Rast is going to have to uh, focus on everything as Bettina Schuller, not satisfied with tarmac, takes rumble strip curbs and bits of grass as well uh, to shorten the track as much as possible. And Bjorn Skotka is going to come under pressure shortly for a Mikhail Nemas fighting over this uh, P5 position. So on the final lap here in this race, everything starts to hot up somewhat. 
Björn Skotka at the moment, the uh, slot car specialist and IT professional has got it all somewhat sewn up in that uh, P5 position, but that may not be the case come the uh, chequered flag because Mikhail Nemes is still pushing very hard from P6. In the meantime, Christopher Haas crosses the timing line and wins again. <laughs> kaboom. Uh, yes, kaboom is the word. Well done. Christopher Haas, very good. Thank you, thank you, cool, good stuff. So Christopher Haas then uh, victorious once again ahead of Mike Rockefeller and Rene Rast. Out of it, you know. Smooth out, glass. Damn it. And that's as close as Bettina ever gets to swearing. Let's hear from our race winner. Well done, Raza Haase. What a fantastic victory here. You simply broke everyone's wind shadow and just. Uh, took very much a great control of the race. What's sort of your secret on, on this unique circuit? What do you think you, where is, you are doing very well? What, what is the key? Well, first of all, I think I was a bit lucky um, because after the race start, there were a lot of fights behind me, so I had the chance to make a little gap. But um, I think right now I feel quite strong over the skyline, um, going down the skyline. And um, for sure, there you can make a lot of time, but also um, it can go wrong quickly. How does it feel in reality? You have raced there, of course, uh, plenty of times, and now doing the simulator in the Audi Vision GT. How is, what's the similarities and where is it quite different? Um, the track is actually very good, um, very similar, like in real. And um, yeah, driving with the recent GT is definitely uh, some corner similar to the GT3 car, which I'm um, yeah driving usually the Audi R8 LMS. And um, this combination actually um, makes me feeling quite comfortable right now on this track and with the Vision GT. So yeah, it's cool. You just left uh, Robin Feller and Renault Rust for the other two positions on the podium. So uh, in your progress for the win today, you are now the favorite. So uh, relax and good luck. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Thanks. Christopher Hase, of course, racing the black WRT gas car with a design created especially for the series by WRT. Designs are playing an important role in our championship because with a cool design, you can win a place on the grid every week of this championship. Gran Turismo racers all over the world are creating fantastic liveries every week for hashtag race home. And for this week's event, Nico Muller has created his own livery for the auction car with the help of Berserk Design. Uh, the process is basically the same like a real car. Uh, when you have the right idea, just some first scribbles uh, on the paper and then putting the stuff in Photoshop for the texture of the 3D model together about one day. But why did you call your company Berserk? And then my wife said, just use your uh, gaming tag um, and, put, Berserk and, and uh, put design behind it. And yeah, that's basically how uh, from the real Berserker, it went to Berserk Design. The best livery I did um, was actually for Mercedes-Benz um, about four years ago. Uh, when they introduced their new GT3 car, um, the AMG GT3, um, they did uh, for 24 hours of spa which was basically sponsored the main sponsorship by Linkin Park to promote their new studio album and for that process I got in contact with Linkin Park with the guys directly speaking with Chester Bennington when he still lived um, was uh, quite a great experience especially because I like uh, rock music quite a lot so um, that was for me the most emotional and most special thing bringing the design into Gran Turismo is the task of Dennis Graff the livery editor fascinated me right from the start. I got in touch with a photographer of a motorsport team and due to him, I got in, though with Fabian. Since then, I'm completely addicted. I'm doing more liveries, mainly replicas, instead of driving. Bringing a design into the PlayStation is not an easy task. Especially for a pattern like the one for Bettina Schoeller, you always have to experiment.
Uh, so no pressure on you, Christopher Haaser, then going from uh, P4 on the grid for this semi-final. Going from pole position, Robin Frines. Let me repeat that. Robin, you're P1. Uh, then it's Steve Gerber. Uh, then uh, Mike Rockefeller, P5. Rennie Rast, P6. And Nico Muller is P3 on the grid. Is that right? Yeah, sure it is. I'm not so sure, but anyway... As always, the race director, Mr. Frank Beeler, as the semi-final is about to get underway. Whoa, what a great move from Steve Gerber, putting himself ahead of Robin Freins into turn number one. So a brilliant start from uh, Steve Gerber then, driving that uh, Audi e-tron Vision Grand Turismo, uh, secured in the uh, hashtag race home auction which of course could put you on the grid as well. All the details on the website. But now Robin Frines has managed to get by um, Gerber and Christopher Haaser. Can he make it three out of three today? Well, he's got Robin Frines to contend with and Christopher Haaser is in uh, P2. Robin Frines is P1. And then it's Nico Muller now in P3, having seen Steve Gerber uh, push back to P4 ahead of Mike Rockefeller and Rene Rast, who are P5 and P6. We're on board with Robin Frines who is leading the race, uh, initially starts from pole position, then loses the lead, uh, but uh, gets it all back together again. But by Jiminy, he's under pressure from Christopher Haaser, who in turn, though, is having to defend from uh, Nico Muller. So frantic racing already. Just two laps of this Bathurst circuit for these drivers. And Robin Frines is leading the race at the moment. That's going to be nice, man. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> Winchetto. Come on, Haze. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey. I got I got a hit. What? I got a hit. From who? From you. Bah. Oh, oh. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> no 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 no. Racing room. Oh. There was more oh. than enough room, my friend. Come, Robin. I got a big hit from his way. Come on. Come, Azen. I'm sure Frank Biele will have a look at. <laughs> there was no hit at all. It's nice <laughs> to hear that you have some interaction, even though That's it's why a... I hard luck. Azen. Yeah. On your inside. Yeah, ciao, ciao, cacao. Weißt du, ich I'm not sure if it's smart to be in the front going into the last lap, but anyway. Not at all. <laughs> A brilliant exchange on Team Radio, which we're able to enjoy as Nico Muller now leads Christopher Haaser. Will it be these two in the grand final? Only time will tell. I'm sure Frank Biele will have a look later. Everyone, when they go over the, the Mount Panorama, there's particularly in this part of the track. Oh. Was, Hase. Quite calm, not speaking a lot. We hear Müller, oh. we hear Rast, we hear Hase. Anyone more wants to join the action? Robin Frines. I think the fight to the final is going to be between Hase and Müller only. Uh, it's going to be tight. Uh, it's going to be. Uh, shit. Had a little mistake. Skyline. Your favorite section, my friend. We're reaching the conclusion of the lap now. That's too much downforce. What can Christopher Haaser do for Nico Muller? Oh, oh. oh sorry, yeah. Uh, it's keep going. Oh, how polite. Haaser has yielded. Oh. <laughs> John, they're coming. Yeah. So That's as the one that me into the garden. To not pick up hey, a penalty. This is your mistake, not mine. <laughs> And now Muller makes a mistake, and that gives the victory to Christopher Haaser. Oh, Maria. Oh, uh, but the, the last corner was was yours, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the but two cool. hits before, I don't know where they came from. Two, come on. Was one. <laughs> but the uh, one on the skyline as well. Ah, but, but your brakes, man. Eh? You were early. Ah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, it was, was fun. It was fun. Cool. <laughs> very, very aggressive driver, this Nico. Oh! <laughs> Robin. <laughs> I really do think that's the kettle calling the pot black, Robin. Well done, racing Hase. Well done, uh, winning. At the very last corner, you were able to pass Nico Miller. You uh, seems over the skyline 
there was a little bit of uh, contact and uh, I think if I didn't interrupt you now, you were still kind of talking about it or arguing about it. But uh, a deserved victory, that's how you see it, I can imagine. Yeah, well, uh, I think this was just a hard race um, all over these two laps. Um, yeah, down the skyline, I was a bit late on brakes, gave Nico a little touch, but it was nothing happened, so my mistake. At the end, we had the second little touch, but I kept him going. And finally, he made his own uh, mistake in the last corner. So this was my only chance, actually, to win this race. And um, yeah, actually, um, I'm happy about this. But it was a great race, so thanks, Nico, for this good fights. So, Christopher, as you are the pole sitter now for the Super Final, this means you have the honor to explain our viewers the track of Bathurst. So, yeah, we are here in the pit exit. Um, And yeah, going to this, um, actually, the second corner, you go all the way up this long straight line. Um, in real, it's quite bumpy. Um, very important early to release the brakes early, keep it inside, using this little camber for the rotation. A little lift into the Audi cutting, keep the car all the way left for maximum grip. Use your momentum going up the hill a little lift like in real close to the wall use all your high speed your downforce coming to skyline little brakes release brake again important no gas between if you have to speed up between you are too slow on entry sending the car through the walls here, early brakes, keep it inside, 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 and for maximum straight line speed on the Conrad Straits. And here, this is actually the, the straight where the races will be decided. Um, chances for a lot of slipstream and overtaking at the end. Hard braking till the apex, keep rolling speed because there's a little uphill. When you do a track walk, you're gonna see. It. And then the last corner, very difficult on brakes in the sim and also in real. But a very, very nice lap um, to drive in batters. Thank you, Christopher. A very, very cool track here in Australia. And now let's see who can make the victory in the super final Nico Müller or Christopher Hase. All pressure right. is on, my friend. It is. Remember. Remember what? The pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so Nico Muller, pole position, but he's on the outside, which does give a slight advantage potentially to Christopher Haasa if he can get a great start, and he does immediately, putting himself into P1 going into turn one. So Christopher Haasa leading Nico Muller. As this uh, grand final gets underway, we are live from Bathurst. This is hashtag race home and two super competitors here side by side. Christopher Haase, who has been so successful here at this track today in this series. And Nico Muller, who coming into this round, of course, leading the driver's championship points. You can see just how hard these drivers are really pushing, giving everything they can to try and take victory in this grand final. Move, Hasi, move. <laughs> it's busy, yeah? It's his home playground here. Though. No, no. Ah, so Nico Muller then, oh, as Christopher Hase runs just a little bit wide. Hase, Schweizer Fuchs. <laughs> Can you translate that? If you could, Tom, I don't Maybe know what it means. Maybe on the straight line. <laughs> don't break ah, their concentration. So it means young ribbit and young fox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there we have it. You are on it over Nico there. Miller, come on. You are the man. Don't worry, man, I'm coming. No, 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 no. 
Express delivery. Oh shit, shit. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Uh, well, apologies for the colourful language from our delivery driver okay. then, as he says. Um. Uh. Express delivery. Express means that Nico Muller leads from Christopher Hassa. Okay. Uh. <laughs> and across the timing line, Woo! Nico Muller okay, wins. Congrats. congrats. Nice job. Thank you. It was fun. Uh, I was a bit late on the break, sir. <laughs> <laughs> The momentum was with me, with you. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh, la, la. But cool, it's fun. Nico Miller. Congratulations. It seems the pressure got a little bit to Christopher Hase coming into the final <clears throat> corners and he just left the braking a little bit too late. Although he was leading, he made you do the very best. Yeah, he was uh, really on it over the, the mountain. Um, uh, probably his, his favorite section of the track, as I've understood so far, and he was super quick there. And I made a small mistake just before going on to the long straight. So uh, yeah, was lucky to still be just enough, or just close enough to get the, a big slipstream and uh, put him under pressure. And uh, it, luckily it worked. I mean, uh, I was on the outside. So the, the only chance I had was pushing him to break a bit too late and the, the door opened up. So uh, it was a nice fight. I really enjoyed it and uh, yeah. It would be cool to see him back. He was, he was really on it. Absolutely. We enjoyed watching. Absolutely. So I wish you a nice recovery and a good flight back home. Yeah, this would be definitely be a very, very long flight from Australia to Europe, especially as Nico has to be quick because the next race is already coming up earlier than normal. We are racing on the famous Nürburgring Nordschleife next Sunday at noon in Central European summertime. Nico Müller, of course, then the leader of the championship in the driver's classification, while in the team's championship, Audi Sport Team Up Sports Line has extended its lead. So, the famous Nürburgring Nordschleife coming up next Sunday. Stay tuned and watch us on our social media channels.